I don't know if you guys are, if I can hear you guys or not. You there, Johnny? I'm, running out. I'm not hearing anything. I don't know if my headphones are kind of get turned off or what. Right. It's off. And it's off. Okay. We don't want that. Forgot that. So, okay. All right. You there, John and Brenda? Hello? All right, John, you want to go and up and slap a prayer? Huh? Yeah. All right, yeah. you want to open this up for John? They're waiting. Okay. I hear you, Brenda. I don't hear Johnny, so I don't know if he's there. Uh, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? Okay. Do you want to go ahead and open this up and for her? I have no idea what's going on. Okay, can you hear me, Johnny? Hello? Oh, yeah. My bad. Okay. Uh, no, nope, you're uh, all right. We thank you for... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. All right, you want to go and open this up and for her? Okay. So, dear Lord, thank you for gathering us here to study your word and help us learn what you want us to learn today. And uh, you're, I think it's glitching or something. Yeah, I think we're having technical difficulties today. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, you guys probably don't even see the screen yet, do you? No, I don't. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm doing then this chapter or what? Or are we doing? Yeah, you're doing this chapter. I got PowerPoints already um already set up for you. So basically, if you open okay. the prayer, we just basically go through your slides and anything you want to add or 
or whatever. So. There we go. All right, so whenever you're ready, Johnny, you can go ahead and open us up in prayer and we'll get started. Oh, again, I just, I just did. Oh, man. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. It must be. I heard part of it, then you cut out. Oh, what's this? This? Okay. Uh, okay, so dear Lord, thank you for gathering us here to study your word. Um, uh, help us learn what you want us to learn and study. Amen. Right. Amen. There we go. Uh, there we go. So we're in Genesis, or yeah, Genesis chapter twenty-eight. Um. And if you want to tell a little bit about the chat before we go, if not, we can go right into it. Do you want to give your own intro or do you want to actually have on slides? Uh, yeah, this is Jacob. This is about Jacob and his, his um, I don't know, uh, can't really say much. It's just about Jake, Jacob, pretty much. Uh, okay. yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let me get the. Uh, let me get my phone. There we go. Yeah, I was trying to get. Pretty much, that's all I could say is about Jacob. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter twenty-eight is the story of Jacob. Oh, what does Genesis chapter twenty-eight mean? Genesis 28, in the story of Jacob leaving home to begin the journey to Mesopotamia, based on the recent events now, or how, however it would be more accurate to describe if to describe it as feeling from his home. Jacob, Jacob's brother Esau wants to kill him for, che for cheating him out for Isaac's blessing. Genesis 27, 41. No, me no mention is made of that, that in this chapter. But this is the context driving Jacob's flight. Isaac calls Jacob before him. Apparently, he has made some level of peace with Jacob's deception since Rebecca has appealed to Isaac and Rebecca has okay appealed to Isaac to send him away. Genesis twenty seven forty six. It is possible that Jacob needed more convin convin convincing not yet or not that Jacob needed more convincing, not yet understanding just how angry the Brother Esau really was Isaac com commands Jacob to go to Rebecca, Rebecca's brother household in Padan Hadam to Isaac also blessed Jacob again. This time, giving Jacob the full blessing of Abraham, including a version of God's promises to Abraham. Once Jacob leaves Esau, learns that Isaac commands Jacob to not marry a canon woman for the first time that his father had 
that his father is not pleased with Esau's two candid wives from from the tribe of the of the Hades, possibly as an attempt to regain some of his father's approval. Esau takes a third wife, one of the daughters of Isaac's brother es uh, Esau. Genesis twenty six or twenty eight six and nine. On the road to Mesopotamia, and apparently alone, Jacob is forced by m mindful or nightfall to to bed down and bed down on the ground. The Lord appears to Jacob in a dream atop a ladder. A staircase connecting heaven to earth. On the ladder, angels are ascending and descending. The Lord re repeats to Jacob some of the very same promises that, in the same words he said to Abraham. He will give J to Jacob and his descendants the very ground he is sleeping on while dreaming. He will make Jacob's offspring as the dust of the earth spreading out in every direction at all peoples, all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through Jacob's offspring. Genesis 28, 10 and 1, 4 more more immediately, the Lord promises to be with Jacob, whoever uh, whoever wherever he goes to keep him safe and to bring the to bring him back to the land of promise, the Lord will not leave Jacob. Genesis eight. 28 and 15. Okay. I figured that was a good intro there to kind of get us into the chapter. And then we got scripture and yeah. some other stuff. And so, like I said, I'll just go through the slides and, you know, and I'll pretty much just go let you take over. I'm just going to go through the slides. And if me or Brenda want to say something, you know, we'll pop in. If not, we're just going to let you pretty much take the whole thing. All right, so Isaac is called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he com commanded him, do not marry a candid woman. Go at once to Peyton Aram, to the house of your mother's father's Bethel. Take a wife for yourself there. From among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of people. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreigner, the land God gave to Abraham, the then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Paden Aram to Laban son of Bethel and er Aram, the brother of Rebekah, who was the member of Jacob and Esau. Man. The all important transfer of Abraham's blessing. And it says, Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and multiply that you may be an assembly of peoples. 
and give you the blessing of Abraham to you and your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land in which you are a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Hanan, Padan Aram to labor the son of Bethel and Siren, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of, of Jacob and Esau. May God Almighty bless you. Isaac blessed Jacob in the name of God Almighty. That is El, Sh El Shadow. This title for God was probably used in Genesis 17.1, which I didn't even know that. I think that's from David Guzik, I believe. Yeah. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blame, blameless. Where God described himself to Abraham with his phrase, Abraham passed the knowledge of El Shadow. Hey, I like that nickname, by the way. On mm -hmm. his son, Isaac, who was now passed it, who now passed it on to Jacob. He first pronounced a general blessing of prosperity upon Jacob. That's a cool nickname, El, El Shadow. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. That's really Any, cool. Anytime it's in brown, it's from David Guzik or uh, Enduring Word. So anytime oh, you okay. see it in brown, it's from David Guzik. Right. Okay, so it says, I'll give you the blessing of Abraham. After general blessing, Isaac then gave the specific blessing, uh, Abraham, covenant blessing made to Abraham and his descendants. Genesis 12, 7, the Lord accepted to and said, offspring, I will give this land. So he, so he built an altar there to the to the lord who has promised to him 15 8 but abraham said sovereign lord how can how how can i know that i will give gain possession of it 17 7 and 8 i will establish my covenant and everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you, you for the gatherings come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. The whole land of Canaan and Canaan where you now reside as foreigner. I will give you as everlasting possession and you and your descendants to you and your descendants after you and I will will be their God. This was the aspect of the bin bright that Esau despised, but Jacob, who seemed equally and unworthy, would gain Jacob, was one to carry on God's promises to Abraham. Jacob was promised a land at, that you may inherit land and nation that may be assembly of peoples. And a blessing give you the blessing of Abraham, even as Abraham was promised. Genesis 12 and 1. I, the Lord, said 
said to Abraham, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land. I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you to and never curse you, and I will curse and all people on earth that will be blessed through you, to you and your descendants with you. Jacob, by no means worthy of th this blessing, each of the four parties in the whole bright right mess acted in an unspiritual manner somewhere along the line the amazing thing that God brought okay parties uns okay yeah the amazing thing that God brought out of this this was a triumph of God's severity among the among amazing thing God brought any good out of this was the triumph of God's severity so Isaac gave Jacob away Jacob wanted to travel eastward the regain the the region where his mother Rebecca was raised. He would not his father Isaac again for more than 20 years when Isaac was truly near death. Oh, man. Mm. Yeah, you can go and take a break from reading, guys. Yeah. You, pass it off. you can have me or Brenda read if you ever want to. It's up to you, though. Y yes, sir. Uh, it says, Esau learned that Isaac has blessed Jacob and sent him to Paden Aram to take a wife from there. And that when he blessed him, he commanded him, do not marry a candid woman. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Peyton Aram. Esau then realized how dis displeasing and or displeasing the Cadian woman were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mechaleth the sister of Nabia and the daughter of Ishmael's son, Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. Interesting. Esau adds wife. Okay. okay, it says he, that Isaac has blessed, or Esau knows that Isaac has blessed Jacob and sent him away to Peyton Aram to take himself away from there. And that as he had, as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, you, you shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob has had obeyed his father and his mother and had gone to Paden Aram. Also Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please his father Isaac. So Esau went to Ishmael and took Mahimeth, 
the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Ishmael took Mohammed, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Oh, wait, I already read that. The sister of Nabiha and his wife, in addition to the wives he had. Esau saw that Jacob had blessed, or Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob. Now the blessing and the bright night seem important to Esau. They were important enough to him that he determined to impress his father by marrying non a non canaan woman when he saw that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother. Esau went to Ishmael. Esau avoided the Canaan women and married women from the family of his uncle Ishmael. Then Jake yeah, Jacob left Beersheba or Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put put it under his head and lay it down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth. With with it with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Okay, it says the road to Mesopotamia. The Lord appears to Jacob in a dream. God del God personally delivers the covenant promise. Of Abraham and assurance to be with Jacob. In all the fear, Jacob renames the place Bethel, house of God, and vows to worship the Lord as his as his God. Okay, can can I take a break real quick? Cause I, I'm eating. I don't want my food to get cold. Yep, you're right. If you want me and Brenda, I'll oh, wow. Alternate. I'll go ahead and um, okay. I'll go until we get to the next scripture part, and then I'll let Brenda go. So this okay. is from David. This is from David Guzik, um, ten through twelve. Jacob's dream of a ladder. Now Jacob went out from from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it on his head, and he lay down in a place to sleep. Then he dreamed and beheld a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Went towards Herod, Jacob traveled eastward towards the towards central land of his grandfather Abraham, Genesis eleven thirty one to thirty two. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter in law Sarai, and the wife of his son Abram. And together they set out from Ur to Candles to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived two hundred and five years, and he died in Haran. And his mother Rebecca, Genesis, oops, Genesis twenty-four three through four. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of Canaanites, amongst whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. Then he dreamed. In a desolate wilderness, Jacob had a significant dream and used a stone for a pillow. One can only imagine 
the strange flood of feelings in Jacob at this moment. The fear, the loneliness, the isolation, the excitement, and the anticipation. This was an important time in Jacob's life. I can't imagine how comfortable that rock pillow was. That couldn't have been all that comfortable. A ladder was set up on the earth. So. Yeah. So a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there was an angel of God were ascending and descending on it. In Jacob's dream, there was now access to heaven. Jacob now knew God was closer than he ever thought before, and there was real access and interaction between heaven and earth. The God of Bethel is a God who does certain, does concern himself with the things of earth, now a God who shut himself up in heaven, a God who hath a ladder fixed between heaven and earth. Virgin. Jesus made it clear. In John 1 51, he then added, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That he is the access to heaven, he is a means by which heaven comes down to us and by which we can go to heaven. Jesus Messiah is the latter. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. John 1, 51. Jesus is the way to heaven. He does not show us a way. He is the way. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I'll let you take over, Brenda, until we get to the next scripture. Okay. Yeah, I'm still eating. I'm going. Step your there part. above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you done what I have promised you. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of the uh, top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Genesis 28, 12 through 14. These are astounding verses, particularly when you think about what you, we read pre, what we read previously in Genesis 27. Here is Jacob the deceiver, Jacob the liar, Jacob the son who has deceived his dad and is now running for his life from his brother Esau, looking for a wife in another land. So he stops. He has this dream. And there's this picture of the angels of God ascending and descending on a ladder. God speaking and God gives these promises to Jacob, just like he gave to Abraham and just like he gave to Isaac. Talk about grace. In Christ, we have received a love that will not let us go like Jacob. We receive blessing without measure.
Genesis 28, 12 through 14 reminds us of the greatness of the gospel. Hello. Oh, did it skip on you? Don't want me to finish that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it, the computer jumped on its own. Okay. We are all like okay. totally undeserving, and God, in his mercy, reaches down to down his hand of grace into our lives and invites us into communion with him, pours out his promises of love on us. Access to God, Genesis yeah. 28 through 12 to 14. Uh, Genesis 28, 12 through 14 reminds us we have access to God. What mercy from God that God would meet this sinful liar and deceiver like Jacob and pour out these promises on him and enable him to have communion with God. This window yes. into heaven in this passage, and I start to think, why? Jacob doesn't deserve this. Oh, yes. <clears throat> but then I think about my own life, and I think I don't deserve grace and mercy. God's chosen me either. And I don't necessarily know everybody who's listening to this. But you don't deserve the grace and mercy God has shown you either. The reality is Jesus has died on a cross, risen from the dead, and in his death, for he has opened the way for you, and I too have access to God, a window into heaven, so to speak. That right there, that, yeah, just got to say this, that right there kind of shows the love of God, because here it says Jacob was a sinful liar and a deceiver, and yet, God loved him and and gave him his promises and and enabled him to commune with God. That Liar. that truly shows the love of God. Genesis twenty eight twelve through fourteen reminds us of the greatness of the gospel. We're about to pray right now. We're about to talk about God in the presence of God in communion with God. None of us deserve this. We are all like Jacob, totally undeserving. And God, in his mercy, reaches down his hand of grace into our lives and invites us into communion with him, pours out his promises of love on us. This is the gospel. It's the greatest news in the world that sinners like you and me, we can know God through the grace and mercy at that are uh, around in, okay. Yeah, I think it says, yeah. I think that word there, huh? I want to say says, I want to say that word says, and I know some of that stuff got hidden by, you know, by the screen or whatever. Now mine is hidden by that little uh, telephone yeah. icon. Okay, 13 through 15, God speaks to Jacob. Okay, this is brown, so this must be from David Gusick. Hmm. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the north, and to the south, and the south, and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. Jacob had no doubt heard about the great God who appeared to Abraham and to Isaac. But now this same God met Jacob in a personal way. This was a life-changing experience for Jacob. Hold on, hold on. 
The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. These words were for comfort and hope to Jacob at this critical crossroads in his life. Essentially, God repeated to Jacob the terms of the covenant he gave to both Abraham. Genesis 12, 1 through 3. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless all, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And to Isaac, Genesis 26, 2 through 5. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and, I, and will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath and swore, I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And I will give them all these lands through your offspring. All nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, decrees, and my instructions. Before Isaac told Jacob the covenant was his. Genesis 28, 3, 4. Laban, your mother's brother, May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become, commu become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreign land God gave to Abraham. The voice of God himself confirmed it. God promised him land, a nation. Your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth and blessing in, in you and in your seed. Families of the earth shall be blessed. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, I am with you and will keep you. Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Oh, oh never mind. I was about to say, I'm it, with it, you. Go, all right. Oh, yeah. Y'all were going to alternate. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, there's a, there, you got a lot, a lot on your Johnny. So I just put pretty much everything on there. Uh, Try to organize the best they could. So there's, we're 38 minutes in, but we'll go ahead and keep going until we get to about an hour. We're probably going to have to break it up over a couple of weeks because we're only on slide 20 out of 62. So there's quite a bit here. Oh, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know it's going to be a long one. Yeah, that's, that's all right. There's a lot of information for this. So, all right, you want me to take over for a bit then, Brenda? Or yeah. you want to keep going? Okay. All right. I am with you. you. Can, my right. <laughs> yeah, I, I get you. I just say it's a mouthful. All right. I will I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. God gave to Jacob the same kind of promise found in Philippians 1 6. Being confided of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God won't let us go until his work is complete in us. Behold, I am with you, that God should give to Jacob bread to eat and revenant to put on was much, but it is nothing compared with I am with thee. That God should send his angels with Jacob to protect him would have been much. But it is nothing compared to with 
I am with thee. This includes countless blessings, but it is in itself a great deal more than all the blessings we can conceive of. God's blessings and faithfulness to Jacob, it seems in several ways that his presence is described in Jacob's life. Behold, I am with you. you. And these are all, behold, I am with you. So, Genesis 28, 15. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. This describes presence, blessings, and the inscriptions, blessings of God's presence. I will be with you. Genesis 31, 3. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Go back to the land of your father and your relatives, and I will be with you. This describes the wonderful promise of God's future presence and blessing. The God of my father has been with me. Genesis 31, 5. He said to them, I see that your father's attitude towards me is not what it was before. But the God of my father has been with me. This was Jacob's testimony of God's faithfulness and presence with him. God will be with you. Genesis 48, 21. Then Israel said to Jacob, I am about to die, but God will be with you and will take you back to the land of your fathers. This was Jacob passing on the blessings of God's presence into the next generation. Um, mid journey at, the, at a site chosen because of nightfall, Jacob had an extraordinary dream that changed his life. <laughs> his dream discloses the hidden yet active presence of God at this change stop along the way. God's ongoing engagement in the world and in Jacob's dis disputed life. Is portrayed through a striking vision of a stair reaching from earth to heaven. This structure recalls this, the step ziggurat or mud brick mountain uniting heaven and earth promoting in Mesopotamia cities such as Babylon, a city whose name means gates of God. And Genesis, God appeared not of royalty or priest but to the terrified refuge. A Jacob on the move encountered a vision full of movement, divine heirs running, continuing, ascending, and descending to do God's work in the world. Only the Lord appeared stationary at the aplex, reading the Hebrew alive in verse 13 as a, above it, as in the King James and NEB, Jacob is starting to recognize this place of God's dwelling and holy ground as a house of God. The Hebrew, mean, the Hebrew meaning of Bethel and the gates of heaven, verse 17, constructing his rock pillow as a commemorative pillow, Jacob fittingly names what will become the major Israelite shrine of Bethel. Seen also, Abraham early called on the name of the Lord at the altar east of Bethel in Genesis 28.8. Jacob's dream is not only awe-inspired and majestic, but also imitant and personal. In an alternative transformation, God stands behind him. Another reading of the Hebrew Allah, as in the NRSV, <clears throat> as he lies on the ground, promising to be with him wherever he goes. Now that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, verse 15, God's words at Bethel indicate a covenant with Jacob, an enduring relationship committed to his well-being and future. God's self-relevance with the personal name, the Lord, Yahweh, grounds the covenant relationship with Jacob, verse 13. The very God 
who in early generations established a covenant with Abraham and Isaac, now speaking with Jacob about an enduring connection extending to his descendants, along and in a strange place, Jacob became part of an integration relationship with God, promise of returning to the particular land in which he lies, many descendants and widespread blessings, verse 13 to 14, mark the abundance of this relationship. Um, let me see how much more we got. All right, if you guys want, well, we got a few more until we get to the next scripture. You want to go to the next scripture part and then go ahead and um, stop it there for this week then? Because we got yeah. like four more. Okay. Sure. All right. You want to read some more, Johnny, or you want to pass it back off to Brenda for a few more slides? Uh, let's see. I can read this one. Okay. It says people are the the means for God's well, blessing. God announces that all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. In you and your offspring, Genesis 28, 14. Earlier, Esau protects, or Esau pro protests, sorry. Have you only one blessing, Father? Bless me. Also, Father, and, and weeps in frustration on being excluded, Genesis 27, 38. The cover the coveted blessing that destroys this family is countered wife or with God's with God's alternate vision, rather a limited blessing one through Defeat and humiliation of others, God extends a prodigal blessing to all the families at the of the earth through Jacob and his descendants. Blessings will be widespread as the dust, the loose dirt that covers the ground is in in every direction and provides the thin layer of fer fertility sustaining all life on earth earlier promises compared descendants to stars or sand genesis 15 15 5 22 17 26 and 4 emphasizing a vast, sizing vast numbers. The humble imagery of topsoil adds an insight about the productivity of Jacob's family as a means for God's blessing for all families. The ground's fertility is an especially compelling Symbol of blessing in our age of environmental concern. Okay. Uh, Genesis 28, 22 is of the first lesson. This vow may accuse discomfort since Jacob or cause discomfort since Jacob appears to be bargaining with God, requiring God to fulfill every promise before Jacob will acknowledge him at Sidel or no Bethel, sorry, Bethel. This interpretation of Jacob's vow as a calculated set of conditions fits well with his character as a stri as a striver one who prevails his wrestling with humans and God to be given the new name Israel Genesis 32 28 
a more charitable inter interpretation of Jacob's vow might view as might view it as an appropriate response since it is wise to test a subjective experience such as a dream questioning doubt and descend this descendment are all part of the faith journey another interpretation that attends more pr precisely to the grammar of the vow places the emphasis on jacob's to return to Bethel in recognition of what was done. Rather than setting conditions, Jacob simply par paraphrases God's promises to be with him in the journey to protect and provide for him in every way to return him home finally. 28, 15, 20, and 21. In other words, to act as Jacob's God. The final condition, conditional, if 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 clause of the vow in the in this inter interpretation consists of a summary. It, in doing all these things, the Lord shall be my God, with the resulting. Then, clawless beginning within the stone which have set up for a p pillar shall be God's house, and all that you gave me I will surely give one ten to you. Genesis 28 and 22. Okay, it says, Jacob's vow signals the importance of more retur returning to the place where we encounter God most most fully. Although Jacob continues on his journey to Herod, he remains oriented on his or he remains oriented to Bethel, the house of God, which plans to return with plans to return. For worship and thanksgiving, Jacob's descendants throughout the earth also hold this particular place as an orienting center. For Christians, Jacob's vow resonates with our weekly returning from the journey of our daily lives to the place that we encounter through worship. Sick. Sec, 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 remit. All right. Yeah. All right. We're going to go ahead and stop it there. We'll start up uh, next week, or actually in a couple weeks, because next week uh, I don't know if we're going to have Bible study because church is doing a Thanksgiving thing. So I don't know if we're going to have Bible study. I don't know if I'm going to uh, be here either. Okay, so we'll just count on no Bible study next week then. We'll continue in a couple of weeks. And then I was going to tell you, Johnny, on the 15th, okay. on the 15th, uh, church is planning on starting that Wednesday night Bible study. And it'll be at 6 o'clock our time. I do oh, okay. believe 5 o'clock your time. So I'll let you know again when it gets closer to that. Okay. okay. November the 15th. Wow, that's my grandma and grandpa's anniversary. Yeah. When they got married. Oh, yeah. So, I'll leave it up to you and how you want to close this out, Johnny. Okay, I'll, um, let's see. I'll, I'll, how about I go and then I'll let, uh, I'll let Brenda go and then I'll let you go, Chris. Yeah, sounds good. Um, all right, so, dear Lord, thank you for helping me study what you wanted me to study. And thank you for helping me acknowledge what you wanted me to acknowledge. And I ask that you watch us as we go about our week. 
and bring us back safety for yet another Bible study. Amen. Dear Lord, help us to take all that we've studied this, this hour and to really digest it and understand it throughout the week. It's, there's so much there, Lord. Help us to decipher it and to all and to really understand what you want us to understand out of it so that we can fit, better prepare ourselves for living the Christian life and going about our business and helping us to keep calm even in the storms of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Dear Lord, once again, we just thank you for an opportunity to go through your word, Lord, that even though there was a lot there, Lord, we just ask that, you know, we're still able to gain something out of that, Lord. So once again, Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you will do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. All right, so we will continue this in two weeks.